every scientific research project started off as just an idea, and your ideas could become real life experiments up in space too. Today I'm here at MIT to talk to Professor Sarah Seeger about her work searching for exoplanets that could hold signs of life far away from our own solar system. In exoplanets, everything is discovery. We just want to know uh, what is out there. My name is Sarah Seeger, and I'm a professor of physics and planetary science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. My big goal is to find Earth 2.0, orbiting another star. Every star in the sky is a sun, and our sun has planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, etc. And so we expect that other stars should have planets also, and they do. And we call them exoplanets planets that orbit a star other than the Sun. Astronomers know of thousands of exoplanets. It's probably true that every star has a planetary system. The easiest way to find exoplanets is actually by a method called transits. For some planets, they're perfectly aligned, so the planet goes in front of the star as seen from the telescope. And we monitor the brightness of a star as a function of time and look for a tiny drop in brightness which might indicate a planet going in front of the star. For most planets that we find, we, that's it. We found them, we have their size, or mass, and orbit, and we kind of add them to a pool of just census and see what's going on. And we're entering this new phase in exoplanets where we're able to actually study planet atmospheres, and we're all waiting for the James Webb Space Telescope. It's the next big telescope being launched by NASA and ESA, and we're ready to take it to the next level. Some special planets are bright enough or their atmospheres might be puffy enough that we can try to observe them. One way we observe atmospheres is when the planet goes in front of the star, some of the starlight shines through the atmosphere. And the atmosphere acts like a filter. Some light gets through, some doesn't. Just like shining a flashlight through a fog, some light makes it through and some doesn't. And so we piece together uh, from the light that makes it through as a function of wavelength, what molecules might be in the planet's atmosphere um, filtering out the light. The way we're going to try to find life is by biosignature gases, gases that are produced by life and can accumulate in an atmosphere far away. I liken it to like a skunk smell. A tiny bit of skunk spray can smell terrifically horrible. And so we're looking for byproduct gases created by microbes primarily that can fill the atmosphere and be easy to see from afar. My whole goal is to find a planet that is truly an Earth twin, a planet that is rocky, that has liquid water oceans and continents and a thin atmosphere, and one that has signs of life by way of these gases in the atmosphere that don't belong. This goal is so challenging, it will take many generations. I'm really lucky that I get to be one of the astronomers that starts this field, but it will undoubtedly continue. It's actually most likely that the person who gets to lead this and find signs of life that we're sure of is a child today, is somewhere out there not in the field yet, not in high school yet, not in university yet. So it's a multi-generational goal. By entering the Genes in Space contest, your experiments, designed to test questions about life in space and microgravity's effects on biology, could become real-life experiments launched to the International Space Station. Go to genesinspace.org to find out more about how to turn your experiments into reality up in space.